No, seriously, we're in, we're in deep trouble. We're, we're really in deep trouble. I mean, I ask young people now, you know, have you ever, I had to read things in school. I don't know what they do now. But, but I'm amazed, it's, it's becoming harder to find people to talk to. Because this is what people, I mean, those of you who are from traditional cultures, I know you had to read like Iqbal, and you had to memorize some poetry, you had to do Janet and Hafid and uh, Arumi, right? If you're from Turkey, you had to know some Yunus Emre. It's just part of being a human being, it's like learning literature, learning the great ideas of the past. People now, it's amazing, but they all know what the latest Google app is, or they know how, they've got to some score level, like master score on um, Grand Theft Auto, where you go around stealing cars and running over old ladies with baskets, um, and getting points for killing old ladies. That's in Grand Theft Auto, right? This is what your young kids are doing. Seriously. And we've got mirror neurons. Our brains can't even distinguish between this stuff. And then they wonder why some kid goes into a school and shoots everybody. The FBI, when they went down to that thing that happened, I think it was in Virginia, and this kid got seven shots off, and he hit seven kids in their head. What the FBI wants to know about is where to train. Because it's very hard to hit moving objects accurately. If anybody, I mean, I grew up with guns. It's not easy to hit a moving object. Well, where we got it was from a video game where you got higher points by getting the headshots. And, and this is a kid who, and then when he was finished, he just dropped the gun, like, what did I just do? He thought it was a video game, only it was school. We had kids in Japan that watched so much Pokemon that they went into epileptic seizures. We've got ADD, right, attention deficit disorder, and they're saying, well, I wonder where it's coming from. You know, hello. They're playing these games all day long that go at about 95 miles per hour at the beginner's rate. You're up to like the speed of sound when you become a master. And this is what their little brains are doing. They're, they're, we, we know all this of neuroplasticity. Their brains are being rewired. This is what we're up against, people. And you want to know why we think Muslim schools are important? Because if they're not in Muslim schools, you're going to educate them somewhere. It's hard to do it at home. And if you send them to these public schools, good luck. That's all I have to say. Because if you ask my opinion, if, if you want to give me a fatwa, if you want a fatwa from me, I really consider it prohibited by the Islamic law to send a child to a public school in this country. That is my personal opinion. I really believe it is prohibited. I would rather my child be illiterate, and I, wallahi, as a lie my witness, I swear to God, I swear to God, as a lie my witness, I would rather that my son was an illiterate, honorable street sweeper than that he was a kafir who loses his way in this world and denies his Lord or falls into the worst forms of sin that he becomes so defiled by this world that even his own parents don't recognize him. And if you don't think this is happening in our community, I don't know what, what, where you're living. This is happening in the traditional land of Islam. We're losing our children. I had, I had, uh, I've had Muslims come to me with their children. A, a person I know in California. Help me with my child. He doesn't believe in Islam anymore. What do you want me to do? I can't do anything. No, no, sit down and talk to him. You can convince him. The time for convincing is long past. Because there was a time he didn't need any convincing. She didn't need any convincing. Because they were different creatures. We know the spiritual lives of children. There's a recent study that's been done. It was a massive study. Human beings are religious by nature. You know, donate this money to something useful. Human beings are religious by nature. 
children have a natural tendency to believe in the unseen. They have a natural tendency to believe in the unseen. Fakhul Adi Abrazi said that the greatest proof that children know that everything is cause and effect, he said all you have to do is take up a little child before it can think, before it can even speak, and hide, and throw a, a ball or a rock. And I did this on my kid, each one of them, so I tested it, and it works. He said, throw a ball so that it just kind of appears out of nowhere to the child, because they're just sitting there, you know, sucking their thumb or playing, and then just drop a ball and hide. You know what they all do? The same thing. And then they crawl and start looking for the source. Where did it come from? Because that is the fitrah of human being. And the great question is, where did this all come from? Where did, where did we all come from? Where did we get these eyes to see? Oh, well, it developed gradually through a process of natural selection. Okay, that's fine. I can, I can buy the mechanism, but who directed it? Well, if that's it. Natural selection directed it. A lot of miscellaneous mishaps, misfires, it went in several directions until it got it right. Okay, that's fine. Why did it get it right? Why? <laughs> if you deny design, you're completely mad. You are, I don't care if you have the, the Isaac Newton chair of mathematics in, in the most prestigious university in the world, I don't care how many degrees you have, if you deny design in the world, as far as I'm concerned, you're a lunatic. Because we can recognize design, I can clearly recognize the design here. That was definitely designed to hold a liquid. It's not solid. I can recognize the design here. That cap was designed to hold that liquid in there in case I turned it over. And oh, it's even got a spout. I can pour it into that. It's all perfect, right? I can recap it so no germs get in there or whatever. It's wonderful, right? It's designed there to put the, it's all there. I can do that. And yet you can't see the design of the Ambusicum Apparentum You can't see what you were designed for. I mean, isn't it interesting how perfect it all works? You know, did you ever think about wudu and just how you were designed for wudu? Allah doesn't tell us like you have to do wudu like this or that. No, it's all perfect. It just it's a it just flows. And how good do you feel after wudu? Seriously, if I didn't have wudu, subhanAllah. I mean, one of the great blessings in life, don't you think I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it's either wudu or voodoo. Right? That's what we say. Haiti doesn't need voodoo, it needs voodoo. 